Welcome back to the next video in our series here, our introduction to the IDFTPH tool. Uh, I'm Ed May with Building Type, and um, uh, in this video, I want to continue our discussion of surface parameter assignment, envelope parameter assignment, and in particular, want to um, show an alternate method for assigning constructions and material assemblies um, to our uh, to our Honeybee zone models. So let's take a look. So let's first take another look at how we manage our materials and constructions in our PHPP, and then we'll talk a little bit about how we can pull some of that information into our Rhino side scene. So let's take a look at our PHPP again. We've already seen a few times, or I've shown a few times already, I think um, we have our, our material assignment happening here in the areas worksheet, but remember that the, the available materials are pointing back to the components worksheet, and the components worksheet is pointing back to the U values worksheet. And all of the actual assemblies, the construction assemblies, are for Passfiles projects normally built in this U values worksheet. So wouldn't it be neat if we could build our assemblies in our, our familiar U value worksheet and then have those assemblies available to us in the Rhino scene? And we can. So the way that we've built the tools is that we can build our assemblies inside of a PHPP and then pull those assemblies out, have them available to us inside of our Rhino scene, and then have those assemblies flow through into our Energy Plus and our uh, final PHPP document. So how are we going to do that? Let me go back to the Rhino scene. Let me minimize the Grasshopper scene because we're not going to need that for a few minutes here. And let's take a look at our Rhino scene. So in our Rhino scene here, if we go to our PHPP uh, toolbar, we've already looked at a couple of these tools. We've looked at the surface assignment tool. So for instance, if I grab a surface and I use the surface assignment tool, remember that there was a select assembly assignment operator. Uh, right now it's blank. There's nothing in this list. So how do we get those assemblies from a PHPP into our listing here so that I can assign them properly. We're going to use this library button. So we're going to use this set component library button. And the set component library button brings up a slightly larger dialog that's going to allow us to either create our own construction assemblies inside of Rhino, or we can import construction assemblies from some PHPP file. So we can either come in here and I can build a new assembly, Ed's new roof assembly, assembly, give it a U value, 0.15, give it a thickness, interior insulation flag, don't worry about that, we'll talk about that later, and we could add a new one if I want to add yet another one, we'll call this Ed's wall assembly, and give it a U value, 0.2 thickness. Etc. So I can work with it this way. I can build my assemblies very, very easily, very quickly in uh, this guy here. And obviously we can do construction assemblies in the components section. Window glazing in a similar fashion. I can add, you know, Ed's awesome glass, 0 0.5, 0 0.4. So I can absolutely build out this way. Or, again, or I can use this import from library file. So let me cancel out here. What type of library are we talking about? What type of library is this looking for? Well, it's looking for a library, or it's going to look for a library that looks just like this. It's going to look for an Excel document that has a U values page with a bunch of information and a components worksheet with a bunch of information. So we can use any PHPP as the source, as the database, as the library for all of our information. So for this project here, for, for illustration purposes, let's use, let me make this a little bit smaller, let's use our source PHPP. Remember, go back to our grasshopper for just a second here. Remember, after we create the Honeybee Zone, we set the rooms, we export to Energy Plus, we convert the IDF objects to PHPP, we set up the PHPP, and then we streamed to an Excel document. We had to provide a blank PHPP as a source document. 
well, we can make this source document do double duty. We can actually use it as the database. We can use it as the repository for all of this construction information as well. So I can actually set up all my constructions inside of this source file and then just read from it. So if I go to IDF to PH example, PHPP source, I can actually set up all of my construction assemblies uh, over on that side. So let me bring up my let me bring up my file viewer. So let me where are we? Bring up the file viewer. Come on. Nope, doesn't want to do it. There we go. There we go. A few too many things up open it at the same time, I think. All right, so we go to C, da, 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 da. we go to C, IDF to PH example, PHPP, and here's that source PHPP. So remember, this was a copy of our original empty PHPP document. But it doesn't have to be empty. I could actually use it as the sort of database, as the repository for all of this kind of information, and I can uh, read from it. So right now, it is empty. So there's nothing here, but we can certainly add some here. So if I go to the U values page, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see this a little better. Let's build an assembly. Let's call this Ed's really good roof assembly. And let's say it's a roof. Let's say it's uh, exposed to the outdoor air. And let's say we're going to have a lot of insulation insulation let's say I don't know it's you know pretty good foam insulation and let's say we've got 200 millimeters of insulation or something let me zoom out a little bit so we can see the whole panel and then maybe we've got our concrete structure uh, it's reinforced concrete structure um, I don't know say just say 100 millimeters four inches or so and then we've got our interior finish maybe gypsum board something like that um, I don't know, three quarters of an inch. So, so we can build a construction assembly here. Notice I get a U value, a thickness at the end there. So this is all in my source PHPP file. If I say file, save, I'll save this PHPP and I'll close it. And then if I come back here to my Rhino scene, I can now go to my libraries, that component library tool. And instead of building my assemblies one at a time here, I can just say import from a library file. And I'll navigate over to my IDF to PH example folder, PHPP, and click on this source, XLSX. Say open. It'll take it a second. It's got to open up that whole file, uh, read all the information out of it, but um, uh, it should only take a second there. And then as soon as it's done, boom, we get all of our information from the components worksheet loaded into our library here. So there's Ed's really good roof assembly right at the top. We get our U value there, uh, thickness, uh, interior insulation, etc. Oh, what the heck is all the rest of this stuff, though? Where did all of this come from? We've got a bunch of glazing that showed up here, a bunch of passpass frames that showed up here, all sorts of different information that showed up. Where did all this come from? Let's go back to our source file for just a second. Let's go back to our source. I've been saying that this is the blank PHPP. And that's true. We did add Ed's really good roof assembly to it. But if we were to go to the components worksheet and take a look at this quote unquote blank PHPP, notice that if we open up the uh, open up the first hundred rows here, most of them are blank, except at the bottom, there's a bunch of stuff in here. What is all this stuff? Where did this come from? Well, these are all defaults. These are all default assemblies or glazing types, which have been added to your quote unquote blank PHPP before you got it. So these, these are all added to the PHPP out of the box, right? These are, these are just default types that are already in the PHPP available for you to use on your, on your energy modeling project. If we scroll down even further, you'll see there's all sorts of pre-certified components, both for glazing, for, for uh, construction assemblies, for frames, for everything else. We're not loading those in at the moment. Right now, the loader stops at um, the first 100 rows, but it is bringing in all of this stuff. So perforated bricks, 24. If we go back to our loader, 
perforated bricks, 24. So, so all this is doing is looking at the Excel document and it's just pulling in all of the information that it finds there. So even though we've been saying this is the quote unquote empty PHPP, there is actually a lot of data that's already in here. So there's a bunch of pre-existing data and then we added some new data here. And so any information that we add in the glazing or the frames or the component section is going to get imported for use in our PHPP. So let me close this PHPP. Do not save it. So that's where all this stuff comes from. Now, if we don't like it, if it bothers us, we can remove it. Oops, we can remove it. Um, we can also remove it. We could remove it from the PHPP there. Uh, we could definitely do that at any point. So that's fine. I'm fine with it. We'll leave it there for now. We can always clean it out later. We'll say OK. So all of that information is now available to us in our PHPP. So if, or excuse me, in our Rhino scene. So if I select that roof again, and I go back to set surface parameters, now when I go to the select surface assembly, notice that there's all sorts of things available. And here's Ed's really good roof right at the top there. So I can apply Ed's really good roof in my Rhino scene, say OK. And now, back in the Grasshopper scene, if I go back to my Create Honeybee Zones, and I make sure to update this, and I take a look at what constructions are being found, notice that Ed's really good construction, or really good roof assembly, has been found and is applied to, if we take a look at the order of these, is applied to the roof. So the roof has Ed's really good roof assembly. And if I come in and set another, maybe I go to, I choose a wall and I apply, let's say solid brick. I don't know, some terrible U value, solid brick, 38 millimeters, say, okay, uh, as soon as I update that, there's wall three with my solid brick. No, what kind of error? Something went wrong getting a construction assembly um, please make sure, so uh, some sort of some sort of error with the name there. So you know sometimes that'll sometimes that kind of thing will happen. Um, but that's being that's being applied uh, correctly there. So we don't need to uh, uh, worry about that. So I can come in and change that at any point though. I could change that to let's change it to Ed's really good roof assembly. And so Ed's really good roof assembly. So I can apply that to both of those guys there. So wall three. Um, and, and I can go in and change those assignments at, at any point. So for sure, you can manage all this data using the native Honeybee tools. You could uh, manage the data in PHPP and use the new IDF to PH tools. There's all sorts of ways that you can uh, sort of manage all of this information. It's really up to you. It's how, however you sort of like to work with this. But however the information comes in, once you have it, we're just going to connect constructions to constructions, radiance materials to radiance materials. And as soon as we've done that, now if we go back to our active PHPP, so this is our active PHPP that we're streaming data to, notice over here, Ed's really good roof assembly, Ed's really good roof assembly gets applied. So all of this is now being streamed through from my Rhino scene. Of course, I can come in here, and if I wanted to, I can I can always add or, or modify. So I could call this, you know, I could change this. I could change this to 0. Uh, you know, 0 0.1, something like that. Say OK. Make sure that this is streaming through. I'll come in here, and we'll see Ed's really good roof assembly now has a U value of 0. 0.1. So we can manage all of this information, again, back in the Rhino scene uh, and, and using our, our streaming connection here. So a lot of flexibility, all sorts of ways that we can sort of work with this, work with this data. Um, again, my preference is to manage everything back on the Rhino scene. I feel like we end up with a much cleaner grasshopper definition. Notice we've still only got three components here that are sort of harvesting all of the information. Um, and we're sort of managing everything in these uh, uh, database uh, sort of management uh, components here. Um, of course, we can uh, reload that file at any time. Um, one note here. Uh, this uh, when when you do this import from library file, it's not a it's not a link. It's not a connection. All you're doing is pulling the data out of the library file and dropping it into the Rhino scene. So when I change this from 0.16 to 0.1, 
this does not change back in the original PHPP. So the load is just that. It's just a load. It just takes information from the Excel and drops it into the Rhino scene. Um, it's not a, it's not a like an associative uh, link or anything like that. So do keep that in mind. Um, it's not a sort of live link in that way, but it is a way to get lots of information into our uh, into our Rhino scene here. Um, so uh, uh, an easy way to do that, and um, an easy way to sort of work with work with all that that information. I think. All right. So hopefully you are up to the same point. Hopefully your uh, project is working. Hopefully you're you're able to stream that information through, and you're able to sort of get some get some material assemblies uh, uh, connected here. Um, uh, get some get some assemblies set up. Let's um let's take a, a quick look, a quick gander at our verification worksheet, and just see where we're at. Oh, we're back to fifty one kilowatt hours per square meter. Um, let's take a look at our take a look at our areas here. Um, why did we go back up? Oh, well, because we applied the default exterior wall and floor back to our assemblies. So we have a relatively high U value for those. So maybe if we wanted to, we would come in and build out a you build out a better better wall and a better floor for those elements in order to in order to um, you know get that that heat demand down to a much more manageable uh, manageable level. Um, but I'll I'll leave that to you. You can you know build that out for for your own project and uh, uh, take a crack at those. So at this point, our um, our connection is mostly working when it comes to the the opaque envelope. Um, I think everything's streaming through, and um, I think in the the next step here is to turn our attention to Windows. Um, we have uh, obviously only been working with opaque assemblies so far, um, and um, I think it's time to start adding some Windows to this project. Uh, windows are going to be a whole nother whole nother ball of wax. There's a lot of parameters to manage, uh, a lot of geometry to manage there, and um, uh, we'll have a lot to say about Windows for sure. So we'll um, we'll come back and do that in in, in future videos. And um, for now, I think we'll we'll cut this one off here. And um, uh, thanks for thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the in the next videos.